Imagine that we had a 6x12 chessboard. In one corner, we have the white queen. And in the opposite corner, we have the black king. In this game, we will take turns moving the queen. The king stays stationary. The queen's movement is restricted, however. She can only go up, right, or upright. In other words, she has all the standard moves of a queen, but she must make progress toward the king with every move. There is no going back. That also means that you must move on your turn. There is no passing and keeping the queen in its current square. Here's the puzzle. You go first. After that, we will alternate until someone has taken the king, and that person is the winner. Your goal is to design a strategy that guarantees you the victory. And while you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hints for today are twofold. First, this is an application of backward induction. And second, through a convoluted way, this is a variant of NIM. And both backward induction and NIM are topics that I cover in Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Are you ready for the solution? If not, here's another hint. Your first move should be to take the queen to I1. Why is I1 the winning strategy? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the key to solving this game is to use backward induction. That's the idea of examining what will happen at the end of the game to inform us what are good and bad moves at the beginning of the game. And specifically for this game, we can begin by marking squares that if you were to land on them at the end of your turn, would guarantee you the loss. For example, think about row 6 and column L. If you were to move the queen into any of those squares on your turn, your opponent would be able to immediately go to L6, capture the king, and cause you to lose the game. Thus, the entire row of 6 and column of L are no-go zones for you. Similarly, because this is a queen, any square along the main diagonal that goes toward the king is a no-go zone. Just like row 6 or column L, if you put the queen along that diagonal, your opponent will be able to immediately go to the king on the next turn, and you will lose. The reason that backward induction is so useful is that knowing where these no-go zones are informs us of which squares we do want to land in. Specifically, think about square J5 and K4. If you land on those squares at the end of your turn, you are going to guarantee yourself the victory. Why is that? Well, think about J5 for a moment. Imagine that your opponent has to move from that square. They only have four legal moves. They could go up one to J6, at which point you'll be able to take the king. They could go diagonal to K6, at which point you'll be able to take the king. They could go one to the right to K5, at which point you can take the king. Or they could go right to L5, at which point you take the king. Thus, no matter what move your opponent makes from J5, you automatically win on the next turn. It's the same story for K4 as well. Any move your opponent makes from that square will automatically allow you to win on the next turn. Backward induction can take us even further. Now that we know that J5 and K4 are winning squares, it becomes imperative to not finish your move in a place that your opponent could then advance to one of those squares. For example, think about the remaining squares on row 5 and column J. 
if you were to land the queen on any one of those squares, your opponent would be able to advance to j5 and thereby secure the victory. It's also just as bad to go anywhere along the diagonal that leads to j5. So all of those are shaded in as no-go zones. We can do the same thing for k4. Everything along its row, its column, and its diagonal would allow your opponent to advance to k4 and win the game from there. Notice that i1 has avoided any shading thus far. Imagine that you moved the queen there. In your opponent's next move, they could go up anywhere on the i column. But all of those squares are shaded in red. They are no-go zones, and if your opponent plays there, they will subsequently lose. They could go further to the right on row 1, but those three squares, j1, k1, and l1, are all shaded in red, so those would cause your opponent to lose as well. The remaining option is to move diagonally. That would be to j2, k3, or l4. But once more, all of those are shaded in red, and thus if your opponent moves there, they will lose. All told, every legal move from i1 loses the game. On your next turn, you will either be able to take the king directly, or move into j5 or k4, which allow you to win the game in the following move. As a result, you definitely want to move the queen to i1. And in fact, if you do that on your first turn, you have guaranteed yourself the victory if you implement the strategy that we just discussed. It turns out that i1 is also the only first move that allows you to win. If you take the queen anywhere else, you will subsequently lose because your opponent can force a winning strategy. You can see this by first noting that everywhere else in row 1 is not a winning strategy, because your opponent could then just move to i1 himself. The next step is realizing that g3 is a winning place to stop the queen at. If your opponent is forced to move from this position, they can only go up into red squares, right into red squares, or diagonally up and right, also to red squares. But g3 cancels out the rest of that row, as well as along the diagonal at f2. From here, that makes e2 a winning square. And because e2 cannot be a place that you allow your opponent to move to, you cannot place the queen anywhere else in row 2. And thus, as we see now, there is exactly one winning move for the queen on the very first play of the game and that is to i1. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.